Walt Disney's unparalleled passion for space exploration is a trait that is easily reflected in the Disney theme parks. Rocket to the Moon, The Rocket Jets, Astro Orbiter, Mission to Mars, Space Mountain, and Star Tours. These are just some of the attractions that have, throughout the years, hurtled guests through the cosmos. In this episode, we'll take a visit to the moon and travel to the surface of Mars as we take a look at Space Mountain Mission 2 and Mission Space, two distinctly different missions, one incredible journey. Our first attraction is Disneyland Paris's Space Mountain, found in a uniquely themed section of the French park known as Discovery Land. Heavily influenced by the romanticized future drawn up by countless European thinkers of the 19th century, Discovery Land is the park's counterpart to the otherwise futuristic vibe of Disney's traditional Tomorrowlands, a change that was done in an effort to keep the park unique from other Disney parks. Although it shares its name with the classic space-related attractions found across other Disney parks, Paris's Space Mountain is a radically different experience in more ways than one. Inherently inspired by Jules Verne's classic 1865 novel, From the Earth to the Moon, the attraction is the park's only surviving component of a project known as Discovery Mountain. Originally, the Imagineers planned to have a large volcano anchor the majority of Discovery Land, inside of which would reside multiple attractions, including the reimagined Space Mountain, an elevator freefall ride, and a lagoon showcasing Captain Nemo's Nautilus submarine from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which eventually found a new life at Tokyo Disney Sea nearly a decade later. Unfortunately, after Euro Disney's lackluster debut in lodging sales, the powers that be decided to postpone the project, forcing the Imagineers to completely revise their plans. Spearheaded by Imagineer Tim Delaney, Paris's Space Mountain took guests to a mining colony on the moon during the Victorian era. The attraction contained numerous references to Jules Verne's fantasy novels, including the Baltimore Gun Club. Space Mountain from the Earth to the Moon opened on June 1, 1995 as the first attraction in the Space Mountain series to include inversions, a synchronized soundtrack, and speeds of over 40 miles per hour. On April 9, 2005, as part of Disney's Happiest Celebration on Earth campaign, the attraction was renamed and redesigned as Space Mountain Mission 2, a continuation of Jules Verne's tale, taking guests even further into the far reaches of the universe. Just as Space Mountain Mission 2 began to rocket guests beyond the Earth's moon, another attraction over 4,532 miles away at Walt Disney World in Central Florida was already sending folks on daily missions to the Red Planet. Nearly two years prior to Space Mountain's reopening in Paris, Disney had debuted one of its most ambitious attractions to date. Mission Space opened at Epcot on August 15, 2003. Visually striking, Mission Space is situated where one of Epcot's most revered attractions once stood. Horizons, a spiritual sequel to Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress, had provided a glimpse of humanity's future since Epcot's opening in 1982. After its closure at the turn of the century, Imagineers decided to demolish the unused pavilion and create a new attraction based solely on one of Horizon's featured themes, space exploration. With Epcot's theme of technological progress in mind, Disney Imagineers consulted with experts at NASA about the future of space travel to other planets such as Mars. Set in the year 2036, Mission Space recruits and trains guests in preparation for the first manned space mission to Mars. Story-wise, however, Mission Space does not actually take guests to the Martian planet. Instead, the aforementioned mission is only a simulation of the various trials an astronaut would experience during such a mission. Of these experiences, perhaps the most notorious is the simulation of G-forces. The realistic effect is accomplished by spinning riders inside a centrifuge at 35 miles per hour, exposing them to up to 2.5 Gs, more than twice the normal gravitational force of Earth. 
In fact, the attraction's g-forces are so intense that Disney introduced a milder alternative of the ride in 2006, after several health incidents occurred. The reworked attraction offers two versions of the same experience, Team Orange, the intense ride inside the centrifuge, and Team Green, which is a motion simulator version of the original ride. Space Mountain Mission 2's retro-futuristic design pays homage to both its Space Mountain cousins and to its source material. The iconic domed roof that embellishes every other version of the attraction is retained, although Paris's version is predominantly bronze and blue and adorned with an array of colorful steampunk-esque elements, including a Columbiad cannon. The ride portion of Space Mountain Mission 2 is fairly simple, much like any other traditional Space Mountain. Guests are shot out into space via the cannon and enter through a series of loops, corkscrews, and drops, while simultaneously avoiding asteroids, comets, and even a supernova. The experience over at Mission Space is a bit more complex. Upon entering the lavish settings of the International Space Training Center, guests choose their level of intensity in training and are briefed on the mission by their capsule communicator played by actor Gary Sinise. Divided into teams of four, guests are each assigned a role in the mission, either as navigator, pilot, commander, or engineer, and subsequently board the tightly enclosed capsules. The fictional X-2 Deep Space Shuttle launches from the Earth and, with a lunar gravity assist from the Moon, is directed towards Mars. The riders are then put into hypersleep to compensate for the journey's three-month length. After a brief moment of complete silence and darkness, the riders are suddenly awakened as the spacecraft begins to enter the Martian atmosphere. The riders are then given the task of navigating through the canyon walls en route to their landing site at one of the planet's polar ice caps. Having completed their landing, the virtual mission ends and the riders unload from the simulator. Based on two unmistakable eras of scientific thinking, both Space Mountain Mission 2 and Mission Space successfully create the experience of space exploration in two fantastical forms, celebrating mankind's unique fascination of exploring and discovering new worlds in the unknown vastness appropriately known as the Final Frontier. <laughs>